crossing that. Vivekananda, he has a firm belief in the inherent rights and freedom for the individual. Right? Whatever he talks for is for the protection, safeguarding of the rights of the individual. And then at the same time, through his message of protecting, safeguarding, and uplifting individual rights, he also spread the message that the rights of the nation should also be protected like that of the individual. Because nation is nothing, but it is something which is made up of a combination of individuals. Right. So if you uplift the individual, that means the nation, that means it is being uplifted already. And as such, he talks about freedom not only in the context of men, but he also talks about the freedom that is the rights of women. Right. He says that if you wanted to measure the development of a nation, you can measure it by observing the position of women. So he gives very much importance to the upliftment okay, of the status of women. So we'll have a look at it point by point. Okay. Now let us have, firstly have a look at his views that love to individual freedom. Okay. <coughs> Swami Vivekananda believed that every person or individual has the right to live a life of dignity. Okay. Every individual or every person has the right to live his life with dignity. Okay, with dignity. Secondly, free from oppression and discrimination. Okay. Life of dignity, free from oppression and discrimination. In throughout his life, in all his teachings, he always emphasized the importance of individual liberty and autonomy. What is how individual has to be given a space to uplift his personality? That was what he professed during his lifetime. Okay, and then he believed that. Individuals should always be free to pursue their own goals. G O A L S. Okay. To pursue their own goals and aspirations. Their own goals and aspirations. To think independently. Okay. To think independently without influence by others. Firstly, they should be given the freedom to pursue their goal. Okay. Their goal. Independently, uh, sorry, their goal, and then secondly, they have to think independently, and then thirdly, the individuals should be given the freedom to express themselves without fear. Now, all these three, if you look at it, find a place when India adopted her constitution, right? Other fundamental rights, right? Freedom of thought, expression, right? Got it? That is something which is being converted from the team of Swami Vivekananda. During his lifetime, he talks about how independent individual has to be left alone, right? To pursue their goals and situation, right? And then secondly, to think independently. And then, thirdly, to express themselves. Whatever you think independently, you should also be given the freedom to speak out. What is it? Now, this file, this is being translated in the form of freedom of speech and expression, which we are enjoying it today, right? And then, the next point, Swami Vivekananda, concept of individual freedom, you should keep in mind, was not limited to political rights. Okay, what is it? His concept of individual freedom was not limited to political rights, but it also extended to the field of spiritual. Okay, not only political freedom, it also extended to the field of spiritual freedom, intellectual freedom, and social dimension. It spread to the arena of spiritual freedom, right? Spiritual freedom, that is whatever religion you can profess. Got it? And then, secondly, intellectual freedom. And then, intellectual freedom means you can you can follow, you can adopt, and you can always okay, propound whatever ideology in this movement. 
Because the power is absorbed with many ideas, right? You divide it into two broad categories, liberal ideology and then Marxist ideology. What is intellectual freedom? What? And then, something we have seen the social dimension, that means there should not be any social discrimination on the basis of race, caste, creed, place of birth, etc. What is Every person should be allowed to enjoy public places. And at the same time, every person should be given the freedom to pursue whatever he wanted to not be discriminated on the basis of caste, race, sex, place of birth, etc. And then, Vivekananda also emphasized the freedom to explore one's own spirituality. Okay, the freedom to explore one's own spirituality. Now, a person who is religious and a person who is spiritual, right? You can become religious by merely becoming a nominal member of any religious community. But when we talk about spiritualism, right, it is different. Spiritualism, to attain spiritualism means you have to be above the common human being, right? What is it? You have to be above the common human being. The Hindus, they try to attain this spiritual freedom or enlightenment through making themselves humanly suffer, that is giving up food, water, right? And then they make themselves physically suffer themselves and then they meditate in terms of days, months, right? And even years. Even your love Buddha, right? They attain spiritual enlightenment, right? What is it? Free from going even, right? And when we talk about spiritual freedom means they are not at all tempted by all these body needs. They may be tempted, but they will not fall down. What is We are human beings. The difference is that spiritual person, if you look at it, through spiritualism, they always could fight this temptation, right? They are not being disturbed by all these temptations. But to a nominal Christian, even before temptation comes, you become the person who tempted others. <laughs> <laughs> you yourself are Satan, right? You <coughs> see Satan is not. Because you are Satan. In the form of human beings. Now, he talks about spirituality and then to seek knowledge. Okay, to seek knowledge and to engage in social reform. To seek knowledge, freedom to seek knowledge. Okay, and to freedom to engage in social reform. And as such today, you know, there was many non-governmental organizations which came up, right? Yes. So, we call it social movement, right? For the protection of the rights of human beings, for environmentalists. And today we have... This has reduced it today. Okay, sweet. Okay, sir. And today, Beyond human rights, you will come across those who are processing animal rights. What is it? And you will come across it. Animal rights. Animals are given the freedom to fight among themselves. <laughs> right. You will never come across animal activists who went to the jungle trying to spread the message of peace among wild animals. <laughs> but if you may be happen to harm animals in the process of trying to protect themselves, then you are being taken to the core of knowledge. So humanity, if you look at it, because of ecology, right? We call it right, Sarkar Sar Sar and I don't know whether this killing of snack which enter and cross upon your private property is against the law or against the nature, I don't know. If you do not find it, the snake is going right. <laughs> But you cannot take a witness to the court of law, right? You cannot take your dog to the court of law as a witness that you fight against the snake, right? So we are always victimized. And then, through all these individual freedoms, what you should keep in mind is that the main belief of Vivekananda was development and empowerment of individuals were essential, not only for the individual himself, but for the 
progress of the society at large. That is why he always keep on professing the individual freedom. Okay. Got it. Individual freedom is not necessary only for the development of the personality of the individual himself, according to Vivekananda, not according to me. But why it is necessary? Because upliftment of individual will in turn lead to, he says that, the progress of the society at large. That's why he professes about individual freedom. Okay. Got it. But he does not talk about negative freedom. Okay. That is to keep in mind. The freedom he talks about is that whatever you do, if it has a positive impact on the rest of the society, that it has to be given the freedom to do. But whatever you do, if it is going to have a negative impact or if it is going to act as a hindrance with regards to the development of the society, that is such type of freedom has to be cut here. Got it? You have such freedom in your first semester, right? So negative and positive freedom. Liberty. Liberty is the other name of freedom, right? So it comes there. What are the freedoms which you should not enjoy? What are the freedoms which you should enjoy? I think you have known it, right? And then, secondly, let us talk about national freedom. Okay. That's about individual freedom. Now, how you have to conclude it, individual freedom? That is, <coughs> the empowerment and development of individuals was essential <coughs> for the progress of society at large. Okay, that should be your conclusion. Not only for the individual, but for the society at large. <laughs> and then the second aspect is national freedoms. Now, Swami Vivekananda, 